Hi, uh, this is Scott, and I'm issuing an appeal to the Bahrain Independent Commission and also to the Bahraini people. Um, as you know, the Commission will be releasing its report within the next few months, and then comes the very large question of what will be the fate of the Bahraini people after the Commission is no longer there to observe observe the human rights climate. And I am strongly recommending that uh, Bahrain have unrestricted access to foreign human rights observers, legal observers, reporters, and physicians. Um, I do hope that the uh, Bahrain uh, Com Independent Commission uh, does seriously consider does seriously consider this and make such a recommendation in its report and I'm strongly emphasizing this to the Bahraini people because it's their right it's their right to uh, have observers there ensuring that uh, that they're not being abused and um, ensuring that if there are any abuses that there are outside witnesses there to observe it and report it to the outside world. Um, I think this is going to be absolutely vital and the Bahraini people should demand it. Uh, regardless of how the Commission views this, the Bahraini people should demand this and demand this from the international community, demand it from, their, demand it from the government, and demand this from the world. Uh, it's their right, and I think this will be absolutely crucial because uh, the Bahraini people, I believe, may be in great danger after the commission leaves. Um, we easily could see a resurgence of the types of abuses that we saw in the last few months. There were many, many cases, and so this is a very real fear. Um, so now I'm going to discuss um, a few examples of observers that did try to monitor important situations, uh, foreign observers, but that were either expelled or denied entry. Uh, the first case is Physicians for Human Rights. I'm going to have links to all of these at the bottom of the video. Uh, Physicians for Human Rights, the report is called Do No Harm. It was written in April 2011. On page 29, it mentions that uh, Physicians for Human Rights tried to visit Samania Hospital on April 8th, but they were denied access. Um, it states that uh, after speaking with the Ministry of Health official, the team arrived at the hospital. Uh, then it mentions that the entrances were... Uh, uh, were guarded by armed men. Uh, it goes on, in front of the Physicians for Human Rights team, the masked police officer made several calls. One to Mr. Ahmed al Shamasi, a Ministry of, of Health hospital administrator who apparently told the police officer to remove the team from the hospital. At 4 p.m., the Physicians for Human Rights investigators were escorted out of the hospital by armed security forces. The team left the country that evening. So this is a case where we had physicians that wanted to observe uh, how the patients were being treated in the hospital to ensure that uh, patients weren't, weren't being abused uh, by security people and the physicians were expelled. Uh, their presence would have been vital in uh, ensuring uh, against human rights abuses uh, for, of, vulnerable, of vulnerable patients. So that's one very important example. Another important example is regarding legal observers. This is a frontline article uh, that was uh, uh, that is from May 13, 2011, and this is regarding the case of Abdul Hadi al-Khawaja. 
It says, an independent international trial observer was yesterday refused entry into the courtroom by the Bahraini authorities. The observer, a barrister from Tooke's legal chambers in London, was mandated by Frontline to observe the trial of Abdul Hadi Al Khawaja, former Frontline Protection Coordinator for the Middle East and North Africa. She traveled to Bahrain to observe the hearing of May 12. The trial started at the Lower National Safety Court on May 8, 2011. Uh, then it goes over the reasons that were given for expelling her. Security officials refused to allow the observer in the courtroom on the basis that her order demission had not been faxed one week in advance of the hearing. However, the hearing of May 12 had only been scheduled at the end of the opening hearing on May 8, thus making it impossible for the relevant correspondence to be faxed seven days ahead. Moreover, the authorities were informed of Frontline's intention to send a trial observer on May 6 and were duly notified of the observer's credentials in advance of yesterday's hearing. Uh, later on, the article describes why it is so important um, to have an observer there. According to witnesses to the court hearing, Abdul Hadi Al Khawaja made several attempts to make a statement but was repeatedly silenced. However, he eventually said loudly that he had been threatened that very morning, May 12, and was fearful for his life. As earlier reported at the May 8 hearing, Abdul Hadi Al Khawaja presented evident signs of ill treatment and possibly torture. And then it describes the uh, fractures uh, that he had uh, to his face. Um, another example that we have here is uh, foreign journalists uh, that were either expelled or denied entry. And this article is from the Bahrain Center for Human Rights, dated July 6, 2011. So it lists, uh, it lists journalists. Uh, yeah, one journalist here is Mohammed Jamjoon of CNN. He was expelled on March 16. Another journalist is Frederick Richter of Reuters. He was expelled on May 10. And you also have many journalists who were denied entry. Uh, Bilal Randari of Al Jazeera was denied entry at the airport on February 17. Omar Chatriwala, a freelance journalist, was denied entry at the airport on March, the Bahrain airport on March 17. Soraya Lenny of Al Jazeera uh, was denied entry at the Bahrain airport on April 21. And Monica G. Prieto of El Mundo was denied entry at the airport on May 9. So uh, we do have cases of uh, journalists, physicians, uh, legal observers, human rights groups, physicians for human rights, they are doctors as well as a human rights organization, um, all, all of whom have uh, either uh, been expelled or denied entry. And as a result of that, important access to uh, um, outside observers has been problematic in Bahrain. So um, I'm very concerned. The Bahraini people will be very vulnerable after you leave. All of this, the torture could easily resurface. I do hope the commission does include this recommendation in their report. And I do hope the Bahraini people demand uh, demand this uh, from from the government, uh, from the world, from the international community. It's their right. The Bahraini people should not be left in the dark while they are being abused. Uh, they have a right uh, to important safeguards that will protect them far into the future because of all they have gone through in the last few months. Um, so, anyways, 
Um, anyways, I just wanted to uh, strongly uh, emphasize that um, before the uh, September 30th deadline. Um, thank you so much.